severe anxiety, uh, other stresses, burnout, it's endemic in medicine. It's a problem everywhere. And uh, we're not going to get anywhere ignoring the problem or sweeping it under the rug. Uh, we're going to make great progress by recognizing and addressing the problem. And basically addressing the problem and succeeding translates into better patient care. This is the James Cancer Free World Podcast. I'm Steve Wartenberg, and today my guest is Jeffrey Fowler. Jeff is an expert in gynecologic cancer, and he is the vice chair of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology and also an expert in robotic surgery. But today we're going to talk about something a little different, and that's the physician wellness program that Jeff is the medical director of here at the James. In recent years, and especially now in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, physicians and all the medical staff at the James and at so many other hospitals are working long, long hours and have to deal with a lot of stress, their patient's stress and their own. Recognizing this and implementing programs to help physicians deal with stress and anxiety and lead healthier and happier and more productive lives is gaining traction, and Jeff will fill us in on what's going on here at the James. Welcome, Jeff. Uh, thank you very much. It's a uh, pleasure to uh, be speaking with you and uh, talking on this uh, topic. So give me a little, give us a little background on sort of the lives of physicians and, and talking to so many of you, people who do research, see patients, uh, do clinics. I mean, the days are incredibly long and difficult and, and the days sort of never end. You got to go home and do research. You got to do paperwork. You got to answer patients' calls. What's it like and where's this, what's the stress level that traditionally physicians face? Uh, basically, that question really cuts to the core of it. So the, the problem that's been identified uh, nationwide is uh, burnout and professional satisfaction of physicians. It's been increasing over the last two, three decades. And uh, at any one time in the United States, about half the doctors suffer from burnout. Um, most have uh, dissatisfaction in their work-life integration. And anywhere from 30 to 40 percent are dissatisfied with their profession. Uh, maybe even 30 percent would not become a doctor again, depending on the specialty. And uh, historically, doctors uh, have always had a lot of stress, uh, but have also gained a lot of meaning and value in their service, in their careers. What's, what's happened over these past few decades, uh, the practice of medicine has become more and more complex. Uh, the speed of information is much greater, grows exponentially. The, the knowledge, the breadth of knowledge required to practice has become very wide and deep. Uh, specialization of doctors has become the norm, even super uh, subspecialization. And then, in, so the demands of our job have greatly increased. Uh, in many contexts, uh, the, the scope of our jobs, uh, clinical research, administrative duties, um, administrative tasks or administrative burden, uh, being on electronic medical records, uh, a good portion of our day. This is all, all added up and it's basically uh, a time management problem, time stress problem. And uh, so doctors' days are extremely busy. Um, doctors, uh, goes without saying, also have a great deal of responsibility. Life and death responsibilities. Right. It's just uh, a lot of high-stakes decisions. It could be life and death, but they're certainly, um, in working with patients, especially cancer patients and their families, these discussions that we're having patients could be the most important discussions they've had in their lives or one of the most important discussions. And so um, a lot of impact uh, in these discussions, uh, uh, those conversations, and it happens on a day-to-day -day basis. So this problem of burnout really results from an imbalance of support and resources 
uh, meet the demands of our job. I feel like in the medical profession and perhaps even in the journalism newspaper profession that I was in 20, 30 years ago, people didn't think this way. It was That was just part of the job. You just work those hours. You deal with the stress. So what? And now we, we've turned the corner where we're starting to realize some of the things you just said, that this can be an impediment to doing our jobs to the best of our ability and having that proper work-life balance. When, when did that change come about? It's an excellent question. I, it uh, mirrors or runs parallel with some of the major changes in the business of healthcare. Uh, more than 30 years ago, most physicians were small business people. Uh, they ran their own business, uh, and, um, hired their own people, uh, set their own hours, and did work hard hours. But they had a lot more autonomy and control, um, and they were customers of health systems rather than employees. And fast forward 30 years later, probably 80% of physicians in the United States are actually employees of the health system, so a little less autonomy and control, and then much greater time stress as far as all this administrative uh, burden and complexity of care. So I don't want to get too much into the issues with the health care system. That could be a whole other series of podcasts. Yeah. But, but your point is well made that that's, the health care system we have now has added to that. And so now how are you and others at the James dealing with this to reduce the stress, the anxiety, the burnout, the feelings of depression? The way we look at physician wellness uh, is that – a physician's emotional and physical wellness, uh, professional satisfaction, positive engagement, it directly translates into better patient care and it enhances the bottom line of our healthcare system. And really, it comes down to optimizing that extremely important, if not sacred, physician patient relationship. Um, and so you ask, well, how did this all start? Uh, here at the James, uh, well, one to two years ago, David Cohn, our chief medical officer, Dr. Cohn, engaged me to start this program. Uh, I've had an interest in this area for over 10 years. So he engaged me to start a physician wellness program at the James for some of the reasons that we've discussed, but basically to systemically address at a system-wide level uh, our physicians' uh, level of wellness and supporting that, uh, supporting their ability to work in whatever way uh, to optimize their well-being and, again, optimize the care provided for patients. So I put a plan together for that, and then about one year ago, this program uh, started. And um, we are addressing – we basically uh, designed this plan around the James – uh, in alignment with the James Strategic Plan that was recently uh, put together, the newest plan. Uh, one of the aspects of what we um, strive to support is the talent and culture of our physicians. You know, physicians are always placed in a leadership position, whether they have a formal leadership title as a department chair, division lead, um, service line lead, but even the newest physicians are leading a clinic, uh, leading a healthcare team, and uh, so we've uh, we know that uh, supporting a physician's leadership skills, providing them coaching along the way, will help their efforts and uh, whatever leadership uh, responsibilities that they have, and it'll support their teams and again translate into better patient care. Um, when you ask about, we also are addressing um, the safety of the physician, safety and wellness, if you will. And so that goes back to some of the stress uh, levels that physicians have and, and the other potential psychological problems, depression, even suicidal ideations. Throughout a doctor's training, their career, they, they, you know, we all, one way or the other, accumulate some trauma from um, life, the nature of our jobs. Yeah. yeah. In addition to life, uh, stress right. and, uh, um, most doctors, uh, 
uh, historically just suffer in isolation. The culture, the, the medical culture has been, well, that's just part of the job, uh, you know, toughen up, uh, suck it up. And so uh, doctors have been ashamed uh, of bringing these out, even in a, uh, to a um, psychologist in a confidential setting, uh, let alone in a more open setting, and so they tend to suffer in isolation. Is the mindset among doctors, my job is to help other people, so my problems aren't important, and that's what leads to some of these problems? Or that, that and also they need to be, they see that doctors see themselves, they need to present themselves to patients' families from a position position of strength uh, and uh, not being paternalistic to patients, but just be strong for their patients. And so naturally to talk about these types of stressors and problems had been looked at as a sign of weakness. Right. And uh, so typically doctors will, again, you know, suffer in isolation. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, Jeff is going to give us some of the specific sort of, I'm not sure if programs is the right way, but strategies and ways that he and his team at the James are working to help some of the physicians with their work-life balance and reduce stress. A revolution in lung cancer treatment is happening at the James. We're proving lung cancer isn't solely defined by location and stage, but rather the individual molecules and genes that drive it. Simply put, there is no routine lung cancer. That's why our world-renowned specialists put their expertise towards treating one particular lung cancer, yours. At The James, we go beyond the routine to prevent, detect, treat, and cure your lung cancer. To learn more, call 1-800-293-5066. We're back with Jeff Fowler, who is the medical director of the James Wellness Program. And Jeff, tell us about some of the sort of specific things that you're doing to help your physicians. Well, one of the first uh, efforts that we made to support the health and wellness of uh, our physician staff is to uh, tighten an effective safety net for identifying and providing uh, psychosocial, psychosocial support for our physicians who are potentially in emotional distress. Uh, one of the problems is physicians often don't reach out for such uh, needed assistance uh, because of uh, fear for how it might affect their privileges or licensure, or they're just plain embarrassed. Uh, so the medical center and OSU has a number of excellent resources like EAP and the STAR program. Really the strategy we've built around this is to normalize uh, seeking such assistance, but also building an effective peer support uh, program and training physician peers uh, that these physicians uh, potentially in need uh, can reach out to uh, for basically emotional or psychological first aid. So we know uh, from research that often physicians feel most comfortable discussing these types of sensitive problems with a peer, at least at first, and sometimes that's enough. Um, also, these trained peers can help steer their colleagues uh, to more uh, professional counseling, uh, psychological, psychological or psychiatric care if needed. How, how are you connecting physicians in these peer groups? Well, uh, it, the strategy there is to uh, market and advertise the program through grand rounds, through morbidity and mortality conferences. Uh, one of the probably the most effective uh, strategies for uh, normalizing the, these types of discussions is having uh, storytelling rounds. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Schwartz rounds. I've not heard of them. It's uh, a type of uh, grand round lecture, if you will, uh, discussing uh, tough cases or uh, 
situations, uh, maybe one situation or items throughout a career, but uh, uh, discuss how it's affected people and uh, affected uh, caregivers. Um, what these types of uh, uh, meetings or conferences, if you will, do is you often have senior physicians telling these stories, uh, showing vulnerability, uh, the types of doctors that others might see as uh, bulletproof type people that never had the problems that they have. And it really uh, lets others know that it's we're all vulnerable and it's okay to be vulnerable. It's also okay to reach out for a little extra assistance. So that's a strategy we have as far as uh, not only having these resources available, but normalizing the um, access for these resources. So you're creating safe spaces for physicians to talk to one another and talk about common problems and how they deal with them. Right. And is there a, a community aspect involved in, in connecting people to not just the community within the hospital, but beyond. Yeah. So, uh, isolation is a problem that doctors have. Uh, we get uh, caught up in our own practices and even with our own divisions or departments, we often don't see each other. Right. Uh, we don't have an opportunity to sit down and, uh, speak frankly about, uh, professional and or personal issues. So, uh, the James has provided a few different attending physician lounges, which also has some food, and they've been extremely popular. Uh, I've been here as an attending for almost 25 years, and I've met doctors I've uh, known superficially. Now I know very well because we've been able to sit down for a half hour here and there be between surgeries or rounds, have a cup of coffee, and discuss cases or just our personal lives or even professional problems, and it's been extremely popular. Um, these storytelling rounds um, and uh, uh, other uh, collective workspaces are also, also strategies to engage community. Uh, the medical center has uh, also instituted other strategies like uh, faculty, athletic council, uh, you know, just uh, services or uh, strategies to engage each other. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize they think that because you work in a large building that you're talking to hundreds of people a day, but you could be in your clinic all day and only see patients. You, someone else can be in a lab all day and only see three or four other of their lab partners. And that could go on for weeks or months at a time. So this creating community that you're talking about sounds like such a great idea. Well, that's what we're trying to do. You know, for this type of program to be successful, you have to have executive leadership. Uh, you have to have their sponsorship, uh, their support, their eye on the program. Uh, you need them to socialize and advertise the program, and they have. Uh, that's uh, we're very fortunate that the James executive leadership has identified physician wellness as a priority. Yeah, and I think it's round up. I'm sorry. I think it's a, just another example how the James is on the cutting edge of new things, not just within cancer research or outreach programs around the state, but within that. That's you. You m more so than many other places, perhaps are at the leading edge of physician wellness, just the recognition and creating this program with you and others leading it. Just that's so important to, you can't solve a problem till you recognize it. Right. Uh, we actually uh, completed an electronic survey amongst our physicians, a 70 to 80 item survey. And actually almost 50% of our docs completed the survey and we don't have the complete results yet, but we're correlating professional engagement, satisfaction, burnout. We're actually uh, um, comparing that to such important uh, uh, characteristics such as empathy and compassion. Uh, and you talk about care of cancer patients and uh, also care of the families the highest level is optimal compassion. And uh, so that type of information we wanna uh, get and 
our ultimate goal is, uh, again, providing that optimal level of care with compassion. I think you're on the right track. Everyone I've talked to, not just doctors, but patients, feels that connection between doctors and patients. So enhancing it even further is going to pay untold dividends down the road. And one of the things I'm kind of curious about in terms of building community and um, exercise is a great way to release tension and stress. Where, what role does maybe exercise play, but also Pelotonia? How does that fit in to build community, to help health, to eat right, to bring people together? You know, there's so many uh, needed touch points and efforts required to make this collective effort succeed. And uh, Pelotonia, as you know, has been such a fantastic success financially, of course, to support uh, research efforts and other programmatic efforts. But uh, the community uh, that it's... uh, supported or that they, uh, but, you know, I, when I look back to when Pelotonia first started, I, that was one of the first major efforts to support community amongst the docs, uh, amongst uh, docs and their patients and families. There were other efforts previous to that, uh, the survivorship program that Dr. Schuler initiated uh, before that. But these efforts uh, has greatly supported community within the James and, of course, community which within the greater Columbus area. Uh, that has an amazing organic, uh, the res- amazing results from that organic uh, effort. So Pelotonia is one example of incorporating exercise into supporting community. The doctors also just you know, come to work early, go home late, and don't have a lot of time to exercise or ability to once you get home and how to get back to work uh, in a short period of time next day. So having exercise facilities at work uh, would be advantageous, and that's something we're also going to incorporate into our James Physician Wellness Program. Oh, you're going to build an actual exercise room or create one in a a space somewhere? Correct. Okay, make sure to have a lot of stationary bikes so people can be ready for Pelotonia. Right. Uh, yeah. So spin bikes uh, will be a key part of that. So basically for aerobic exercise uh, and have a private shower stall that people can use and uh, just make it easy to get a half hour of exercise in the middle of your busy day. That does wonders to uh, re-energize one to get back to the important job that we do. It is amazing how much and an half an hour, an hour of physical exercise can just improve your mood and outlook on life. Right. So, right. so I'm curious, everything, all, everything you've talked about has been, you've been planning and working on for a year or more, but back in February, March, we had a big monkey wrench in, in, in everything, every aspect of life with the, the pandemic and the lockdown. And for, you know, some of us like myself, it's impacted me in one way, but if you work in a medical setting, the, the changes in your life, the anxiety, the, the hours of work are, have increased. So in addition to everything else you've said, with the extra pressures from COVID and with dealing with patients, what are you, you doing to, for physician wellness? We uh, got together and addressed all types of potential psychosocial distress needs, potential housing needs, uh, uh, economic support and food support needs, uh, daily meditation, mindfulness practices online, uh, other wellness advice. Uh, the the effort that I led within this work group was to help um, kind of uh, coordinate or um, put all the uh, collate all the information that we already had about how to access wellness resources that exist. Um, It's a very rich uh, group of resources, uh, menu of resources, if you will. We put uh, together, kind of streamlined how to access those, provided those to managers and supervisors, of course, any uh, employee, and put together peer support programs or added to the peer support programs that we had for 
other health employees, but really we also recruited physicians to be peer supporters as well. In other words, to look out for each other. It, it seems to me I've had the chance on this podcast and to just talk to an interview and get to know so many James doctors. And while I'm sure everything you said is true and the anxiety and stress are issues, the people here that I meet at the James, James seem passionate. They seem to care about their patients and enjoy what they're doing. But again, I, I know that there's pressure and stress, but it seems like you and others and the, the top administrators are looking out for people and making sure that they are able to be at their best personally and professionally. And it seems like the James is once again at the top of the curve in taking care of their physicians. That's the goal. I mean, I've uh, been an attending physician here, like I said, for almost 25 years. Uh, And one of the aspects I've appreciated most about the James and also Ohio State Medical Center is the community, uh, the ability to practice at the highest level of our training, uh, collaborative efforts. And, uh, but with all the external pressures that are out there in our society and in healthcare, we need to protect each other from those external pressures so we can focus on the core priorities of our professional efforts. And again, that comes back to optimizing patient care. Okay, I'm going to, we're just about finished, and I want to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a tough one now. What do okay. you personally do to help relieve stress and anxiety? Is there a certain exercise or, or things you like to do? How do you, yeah. the, the one in charge of physician wellness, how are you healing yourself? I've always been good uh, about making sure I take all my vacation time. I have a number of outside interests. I love to fish, especially fly fish. I tie my own flies. And uh, that's a lifetime uh, passion. It has a never-ending learning curve. Uh, I've always played sports my whole life, uh, tennis and now golf, and I always exercise. I do yoga regularly. I uh, ride on a spin bike, a Peloton bike uh, for exercise. I don't ride on the roads anymore. Uh, So I'm always exercising, uh, yoga and riding and a little bit of weight training. Um, I try to meditate almost every day, but sometimes that doesn't happen. And that's just a constant work in progress. Um, And uh, of course, number one is uh, family and uh, I always try to do a better job paying, you know, paying attention to the family, being part of the family. And when I give lectures on this topic to new doctors, medical students, residents, new attendings, you know, the the folks that tend to suffer the most in this be, is your family. And the folks that are your greatest supporters, care about you the most, are your families. And uh, so that's a constant work in progress as well. Okay. Well, it sounds like you have figured it out and have a pretty good work-life balance and are trying to teach others. So thanks for doing that. (laughs) And as I also mentioned at the very beginning of this podcast, you're also an expert in and the leader of the robotics um, surgery team here at the James. So I would love to do another podcast with you in a couple months on that topic because that's that's fascinating. So absolutely, I don't want to add to your, your... workload and stress, but we'll do that in a few months. Okay. No, that'd be a pleasure. (laughs) All right. So thanks for joining this podcast and sharing all this great information. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, It was a pleasure. This podcast is brought to you by the Ohio State University Comprehensive Cancer Center, Arthur G. James Cancer Hospital, and Richard J. Solov Research Institute. For more information, check out our website, cancer.osu.edu.